Bank runs. No money in ATMs, branches closed. Get your money out of the banks. We are living in crazy times. I have a hard time believing that most of the general public is not awake, but in reality, they are. We've never seen anything like this. I mean not even under Obama during the worst part of the Great Recession. Now the Fed is desperately trying to keep interest rates from rising. The problem is that it's a much bigger debt bubble this time around, and the Fed is going to have to blow a lot more air into it to keep it inflated. The difference is this time it's not going to work. It looks like the Fed did another $104.15 billion of not QE in a single day. The Fed claims it's only temporary. But that is precisely what Bernanke claimed when the Fed started QE1. Milton Friedman once said, nothing is so permanent as a temporary government program. The same applies to QE, or whatever the Fed wants to pretend it's doing. Except this is not QE4, according to Powell. Right. Pumping so much money out, and they are accusing China of currency manipulation? Wow. Seriously. Amazing. Dump the US dollar while you still have a chance. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. And it is even worse than that, in addition to the $104.15 billion of not QE, the Fed added another $56.65 billion in liquidity to financial markets the next day. That's $160.8 billion in two days. In just 48 hours. That is more than two times the highest amount the Fed has ever injected on a monthly basis under a QE program, which was $80 billion per month. Since this isn't QE, it will be really scary on what they are going to call QE will it twice, three times, four times, five times what this injection per month. It is going to be explosive since it takes about 60 to 90 days for prices to react to this. This month should see significant inflation as prices soak up the excess liquidity. The question is, where will the inflation occur first? The spike in the repo rate might have a technical explanation. A misjudgment was made in the Fed's money market operations. Even so, two conclusions can be drawn. Managing the money markets is becoming harder, and from now on, banks will be studying each other's creditworthiness to a greater degree than before. Those people who struggle with the minutia of money markets, and that includes most professionals, should focus on the causes and not the symptoms. Financial markets have recovered from each downturn since 1980 because interest rates have been cut to new lows. Post-2008, they were cut to near zero or below zero in all major economies. In response to a new financial crisis, they cannot go any lower. Central banks will look for new ways to replicate or broaden QE. At some point, governments will simply see repression as an easier option. Then there is the problem of risk-free assets becoming risky assets. Financial markets assume that the probability of major governments such as the US or UK defaulting is zero. These governments are entering the next downturn with debt roughly twice the levels proportionate to GDP that was seen in 2008. The belief that the policy worked was completely predicated on the fact that it was temporary and that it was reversible, that the Fed was going to be able to normalize interest rates and shrink its balance sheet back down to pre-crisis levels. Well, when the balance sheet is 5 trillion, 6 trillion, 7 trillion when we're back at zero, when we're back in a recession, nobody is going to believe it is temporary. Nobody is going to believe that the Fed has this under control, that they can reverse this policy. And the dollar is going to crash. And when the dollar crashes, it's going to take the bond market with it, and we're going to have stagflation. We're going to have a deep recession with rising interest rates, and this whole thing is going to come imploding down. Everything is temporary with the Fed, including remaining off the gold standard temporary in the Fed's eyes could mean at least 50 years. This liquidity problem is a signal that trading desks are loaded up on inventory and can't get rid of it. Repo is done out of a need for cash. If you own all of your securities, i.e., a long only, no leverage mutual fund, you have no need to repo your securities, you're earning interest every night so why would you want to repo your securities where you are paying interest for that overnight loan, securities lending is another animal. So, it is those that lever up and need the cash for settlement purposes on securities they've bought with borrowed money that needs to utilize the repo desk. With this in mind, as we continue to see this need to obtain cash, again, 
needed to settle other securities purchases. It shows these firms don't have the capital to add more inventory to, what appears to be, a bloated inventory. Now comes the fun part. The Treasury is about to auction 3s, 10s, and 30-year bonds. If I am correct, again I could be wrong. The Fed realizes securities firms don't have the shelf space to take down a good portion of these auctions. If there isn't enough retail, institutional demand, it will lead to not only a crappy sale but major concerns to the street that there is now no backstop, at all, to any sell-off. At which point, everyone will want to be the first one through the door and sell immediately, but to whom? If there isn't enough liquidity in the repo market to finance their positions, the firms would be unable to increase their inventory. We all saw repo shut down on the 2008 crisis. Wall Street runs on money. They lever up to inventory securities for trading. If they can't get overnight money, they can't purchase securities. And if they can't unload what they have, it means the buy side isn't taking on more either. Accounts settle overnight. This includes things like payrolls and bill pay settlements. If a bank doesn't have enough cash to pay out what its customers need to pay out, it borrows. At least one and probably more than one banks are insolvent. That's what's going on. First, it can't be one or two banks that are short. They'd simply call around until they found someone to lend. But they did that, and even at markedly elevated rates, still, no one would lend them the money. That tells me that it's not a problem of a couple of borrowers, it's a problem of no lenders. And that means that there's no bank in the world left with any real liquidity. They are all maxed out. But as bad as that is, and that alone could be catastrophic, what it really signals is even worse. The lending rates are just the flip side of the coin of the value of the assets lent against. If the rates go up, the value goes down. And with rates spiking to 10%, how far does the value fall? enormously. And if banks had to actually mark down the value of the assets to reflect 10% interest rates, then my god, every bank in the world is insolvent overnight. Everyone's capital ratios are in the toilet, and they'd have to liquidate. We're talking about the simultaneous insolvency of every bank on the planet. Bank runs. No money in ATMs, branches closed. Safe deposit boxes confiscated. The whole nine yards, it's actually here. The scenario has tended to guide toward for years and years is actually happening right now. And people are still trying to say it's under control. Every bank in the world is currently insolvent. The only thing keeping it going is printing billions of dollars every day. Financial Armageddon isn't some far-off future risk. It's here. Prepare accordingly. This fiat system has reached the end of the line, and it's not correct that fiat currencies fail by design. The problem is corruption and manipulation. It is corruption and cheating that erodes trust and faith until the entire system becomes a gigantic fraud. Banks and governments everywhere are the problem and simply have to be removed. They have lost all trust and respect, and all they have left is war and mayhem. As long as we continue to have a majority of braindead asleep imbeciles following orders from these psychopaths, nothing will change. Fiat currency is not just thievery. Fiat currency is slavery. Ultimately the most harmful effect of using debt of undefined value is money, i.e., fiat currencies, is the de facto legalization of a caste system based on voluntary slavery. The bankers have a charter, or the legal right, to create money out of nothing. You, you don't. Therefore you and the bankers do not have the same standing before the law. The law of the land says that you will go to jail if you do the same thing, creating money out of thin air that the banker does in full legality. You and the banker are not equal before the law. All the countries of the world, Islamic or secular, Jewish or Arab, democracy or dictatorship, all of them place the bankers above you. And all of you accept that only whining about fiat money going down in exchange value over time, price inflation which is not the same as monetary inflation. Actually, price inflation itself is mainly due to the greed and stupidity of the bankers who could keep fiat money's exchange value reasonably stable, only if they wanted to. Witness the crash of silver and gold prices which the bankers of the world, Russian, American, Chinese, Jewish, Indian, Arab, all of them collaborated to engineer through the suppression and stagnation of precious metals prices to levels around the metals production costs, or what it costs to dig gold and silver out of the ground. The bankers of the world could also collaborate to keep nominal prices steady, as they do in the case of the suppression of precious metals prices. 
After all, the ability to create fiat money and force its usage is a far more excellent source of power and wealth than that which is afforded simply by stealing it through inflation. The bankers' greed and stupidity blind them to this fact. They want it all, and they want it now. In conclusion, bankers can create money out of nothing and buy your goods and services with this worthless fiat money, effectively for free. You, you can't. You, you have to lead a miserable existence for the most of you and work in order to obtain that effectively non-existent, worthless credit money, whose purchasing, exchange value is not even defined, thus rendering all contracts based on the null and void, that the banker effortlessly creates out of thin air with a few strokes of the computer keyboard, and which he doesn't even bother to print on paper anymore, electing to keep it in its pure quantum uncertain form instead, as electrons whizzing about inside computer chips which will become mute and turn silent refusing to tell you how many fiat dollars or euros there are in which account, in the absence of electricity. No electricity, no fiat, nor crypto money. It would appear that trust is deteriorating as it did when Lehman blew up. Something really big happened that set off this chain reaction in the repo markets. Whatever that something is, we aren't be informed. They're trying to cover it up, paper it over with conjured cash injections, play it cool in front of the cameras while sweating profusely under the $5,000 suits. I'm guessing that the final high-speed plunge into global economic collapse has begun. All we see here is the ripples and whitewater churning the surface, but beneath the surface, there is an enormous beast thrashing desperately in its death throes. Now is probably the time to start tying up loose ends with the long-running prep projects, just saying. In other words, prepare accordingly, and get your money out of the banks. I don't care if you don't believe me. Get your money out of the banks. Don't keep any more money in a bank than you need to pay your bills and can afford to lose. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.